Hello and welcome viewers and subscribers of AVG News. Only say the son of Nobe is my name and I hope I find you well. Uh, I, as I promised yesterday uh, that we will continue to give you an update on the planned protest by Zimbabwean opposition activists uh, across uh, the Southern African Development Community region. Uh, I do have now some confirmation that Indeed, the protest that's supposed to take place in Zambia uh, is continuing and, as I told you yesterday, is slated for the 11th of July, which is today, and tomorrow, the 12th of July. Uh, you will know that we posted yesterday a video that I did and I read out uh, one of the posters that were uh, shared about the protests that are meant to be done or to be held today uh, in Zambia. So now I've been given uh, information that the protest organizers have now made uh, their application to have these protests cleared in Zambia uh, where we expect uh, members of the SAD community, especially the organ tracker on politics and defense, to meet. Uh, so this application letter, uh, which has already been stamped by the Zambian police, was made on the 10th of July 2024. Uh, it was uh, addressed to the Inspector General of Police and delivered at the Zambia Police Service Headquarters, which is where the letter was stamped on the very day, that is the 10th of July 2024. So the letter reads, we, the citizens of Zimbabwe, domiciled in the Republic of Zambia and neighboring countries, namely South Africa, Botswana, Namibia, Mozambique, Lesotho, and Zimbabwe, hereby notify you of our intention to hold a peaceful demonstration at the SADC summit venue in Lusaka. The protests will take place on the 11th and 12th of July 2024. Our demonstration aims to bring attention to the issue of the August 2023 election, which sat through former Vice President Nevas Mumba's report correctly said the election was fraught with irregularities and therefore could not be de deemed free and fair. We also want to bring to the attention of SADC that we, the people of Zimbabwe, are vehemently against Zimbabwe taking over the chairmanship of SADC before the issue of the stolen elections has been resolved. We believe that this peaceful demonstration will effectively convey our concerns and foster a constructive dialogue on these important matters. We are kindly asking for your support and cooperation in facilitating this peaceful protest, your assistance in ensuring the safety and security of all participants and maintaining public order will be greatly appreciated. Thank you very much for your understanding and support. Sincerely. So, this is the letter that has been written to the Zambian police and I'm told by our sources in Zambia that this letter has been delivered and this protest has somehow been cleared to be carried on today and tomorrow. So for those who don't know, there has been uh, some movements that are uh, built and uh, run by Zimbabweans outside, Zamb outside Zimbabwe but within the uh, sub-region and they are protesting against Zimbabwe assuming this chairmanship of SADC and President Emerson Nangakwa taking over as the next chairperson of the SADC. And they are saying uh, in their briefings that they are opposed to President Nangakwa taking over the chairpersonship of SADC because, according to them, the elections in Zimbabwe in 2023 were stolen by ZANU PF, were rigged. And although uh, the SADC election observer mission did not as many people believe nullify the election and although the SEOM doesn't have the power and mandate to nullify any elections their argument is that its report is enough evidence that the election was stolen the SEOM stated that there were cross irregularities in the manner in which the elections were held in Zimbabwe they raised a number of issues that include voter intimidation, that include the fuzz that uh, they say intimidated voters outside the voting stations. They talk about political violence. They talk about a number of other issues, uh, failure to access the voters' role by the opposition, uh, 
and fair media coverage, especially by the state run media or the public media, let me say. And they raised these other issues, several issues uh, on the conduct of the Zimbabwe Electoral Commission, the ZEC, and the constitution of the ZEC. And they said these do not meet the standards set out in Zimbabwe's own Electoral Act and Zimbabwe's own constitution as well as the SAD protocol on the conduct of free and democratic elections. They also went on to say that those who have grievances should exhaust the, the set out uh, remedial actions uh, according to the Electoral Act and the Zimbabwean Constitution. But you would understand that wherever politicians are involved, you will hear things like the judiciary is uh, captured, uh, which has been raised by a number of uh, pro-democracy movements in Zimbabwe and a number of uh, opposition activists and officials in Zimbabwe. And they are, they are saying that they are organizing these protests to make sure that they bring to the fore the grievances that mainly the opposition has against the conduct of the Zimbabwean authorities, especially after the elections. They are saying that there has been no, uh, there has been no uh, tolerance of opposing views in the country. They are saying that the government has been crushing all dissenting voices. They are saying that the opposition has been targeted for harassment. They has been targeted for uh, abduction of its members. That is, has been targeted for the arrest and cooked on cooked up churches of its members and that the opposition was uh, in a way decimated in parliament. You know that there were recalls that were done uh, based on the letters that were written by uh, a man called Sengezo Chabang, who claims to be the secretary general of the mainstream opposition, that is the Triple C. Uh, but the Triple C itself said that they didn't know Chabang or those who did knew him just as an ordinary member or as a former member of the MTCT that is led by uh, Senator Douglas Monzora, but not as a secretary general of the party as he claimed. But we saw uh, Monzora write, I mean, this uh, Sengezo Chabang writing a letter to the Speaker of Parliament, that is Advocate Jacob Mutenda, and recalling certain members of the opposition in various segments and in various episodes, in various uh, series uh, of letters and many of them were recalled, including the former deputy spokesperson of Triple C, who is uh, Gift Ostalos Siziba. We know a number of other uh, legislators of the Triple C and councillors who were recalled based on the letters written by Sengezo Chabang. The a matter was taken to court by one of the recalled members, that is Prince Tubego Sibanda, and they lost, that is the Triple C members who were recalled and went to court. They lost because they were challenging that. Uh, Sengezo Chabang is not what he claims to be, which is the Secretary General of the Triple C. But they lost that matter in court and more recalls were held. And right now, Chamisa has left, that is, Advocate Nelson Chamisa eventually left Triple C and said that the party had been uh, taken over by ZANU PF. It had been uh, infiltrated by ZANU PF uh, CIOs, let me say, uh, ZANU PF state, ZANU PF aligned state agents. And he left and said, there's nothing more in Triple C and he's trying to come up with his own political movement that we don't know uh, at this stage where it is. But the remaining Triple C supporters and members are saying that their party has been decimated and therefore they want this to take uh, charge and make sure that there is constructive dialogue between the Zimbabwean government and Nelson Chamisa, who they still believe carries the mandate of the people in the opposition, and they want these guys to sit together and come up with a lasting solution to the political intolerance and to the political impasse that is happening in the country, as well as the economic downturn that is continuing under the watch of ZANU PF. They are talking about co uh, corruption that is taking place. You know, there are a number of so called poster boys of corruption that have been linked with President Emerson Mnagakwa, including Tenderpreneur and Shadow with businessman who's called Fignel Chivayo, uh, who claims in a number of uh, audios that have been released to the media and to the public that uh, he is in control of government, which in summary means that he has captured the president because he spoke 
uh, about having captured the president, not in those terms, but he said that Ndagati Pada Kutitsui, which means that I am in control, I am holding the reins in as far as the president is concerned. So they want all these, that is the opposition activists, to be brought to the fore and to the attention of the subject so that there can be constructive dialogue which results in peace returning to Zimbabwe in opposition supporters and officials moving around freely and being free to exercise their political will, being free to, pro to exercise their freedom of assembly and freedom uh, of choice, uh, that is in terms of politics. But we don't know how the SAT is going to react. But what we know for certain, which we don't want to lie about, is that Zimbabwe is going to take over the reins of the SAT next month and President Emerson Nangakwa is going to be the chairperson of the sub-regional body. There is now no way that the side can listen to the opposition and refuse to give Zimbabwe the reins. So I think uh, what needs to be done is that these opposition activists should come up with attainable goals like fighting for the return of peace in Zimbabwe, fighting for uh, an allowance for the opposition to do its, its political business, to go about doing its political business, hold its rallies, uh, be allowed to participate in parliament, be allowed to participate in nation building uh, because the other uh, demands that they are making like the National Transitional Authority coming on or fresh elections being held are not going to hold water and they will not be listened to because there is no precedence uh, in terms of the SADC uh, responding to opposition because we've seen in Mozambique where, I mean in uh, in Swaziland, where the opposition is not allowed to even exist, but we have seen Swaziland uh, being allowed into the SADC, not being put under any form of pressure. People have been shot in Swaziland, but nothing has happened. People have been shot in Zimbabwe previously. Nothing has happened from the SADC and uh, the AU. But what we believe is an attainable goal is the cessation of hostilities against uh, opposition activists and officials. So this is what, as I believe, is an attainable goal that the SAC should be brought uh, to the attention of the reported uh, repression that is happening under the watch of President Emerson Nangakwa. And then they need to be set together, not only Nelson Chamisa, because he's no longer leading the opposition as it is, although he's a former uh, opposition leader, he doesn't lead any organization at the present moment. So what needs to be done is that every stakeholder in the Zimbabwean political, socio-political uh, setup should be brought uh, to the House to negotiate even those political parties that have never uh, campaigned, that have never participated in elections, that didn't uh, participate in the 2023 elections, need to be brought together because this is an issue uh, involving Zimbabweans. It cannot be an issue that is left to two intolerant political parties that do not tolerate each other, that do not see eye to eye being left to negotiate this because their demands are always out of uh, uh, they are always uh, and peer to their demands that are not attainable. So at the end of the day, we need people who are right-minded, people who are right, who are focused, uh, who are forward-looking to come together and be the ones that take over the negotiations or lead the negotiations or become part of the negotiations. I'm talking here about NGOs, I'm talking about the churches, I'm talking about uh, some uh, trade unions, I'm talking about um, residents, organizations, coming together with the political parties from different sectors, not only two political political parties, because we are where we are, because Zimbabwe is a two-party system and it's a polarized political setup. And this is why we are where we are, because these political parties have forgotten about the people. They're only focusing on their attainment of power or retention of power. So this is what I believe. But the protests are going on. We are going to continue covering them and we will give uh, some interviews, uh, chance, a chance so that you see and hear for yourself what these people are doing and what their demands are. Thank you very much for subscribing to this channel. Don't forget uh, to share this video, like it as well. Thank you.